I'm Tyler Young, a Dell Certified Sales Engineer here at XPi Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a high-level comparison of Dell's PowerEdge R7515 and Dell's PowerEdge R7525. Let's get started. First, let's begin with the chassis. You'll notice that the R7515 is slightly shorter than the R7525. However, they both hold the same 2U form factor. Now, taking a look at the front of the server, you'll notice that both servers are capable of holding up to 24 two and a half inch drives. We even have configurations such as this one that can hold a few NVMe drives as well. For those of you who prefer three and a half inch drives instead of two and a half inch drives, don't worry, Dell didn't forget about you. Both of these servers have the chassis options that allow up to 12 three and a half inch drives. Both the R7515 and the R7525 have the ability to utilize SAS, SATA, or NVMe drives. In addition to the drives up front, both servers also have the capability to add up to two 25 two inch drives in the rear. Although both of these servers are 15 gen servers, the R7525 has a couple notable improvements over the R7515. The first being NVMe Hardware RAID. Yes, you heard me correct. Dell now has a RAID controller that supports hardware RAID on NVMe configurations. But please keep in mind, this is only available on the R7525 not the R7515. And uh, I'm dying to tell you about the other huge improvement, but I have to wait until we get to the rear of the server in just a few minutes, because it just makes sense, so bear with me. Moving on to the fans. Now, you'll notice that there are six fans in both chassis configurations. However, there is a major difference. Can you spot it? If you said the color of the tabs, you're right. So the R7515 is limited to fans with blue tabs indicating that they are cold swappable, meaning you must power off your server before swapping out these fans. The fans in the R7525, however, are hot swappable, so you can actually pop these out while the server is running. Both fans are able to generate efficient airflow as it pulls cold air throughout the chassis from front to back. Next, let's take a look at the processors. You can't see them now as they are covered by these heat sinks, but hold them up side by side and they pretty much look the same. While both the R7515 and the R7525 support second and third gen AMD EPIC processors, the R7515 is limited to just one processor, while the R7525 is dual socket. Now, I mentioned that both of these servers utilize second or third gen AMD EPIC processors, but did you know that just one of these processors alone has the capability to scale of up to 64 cores per socket? 64 cores, that's up to 128 cores total in the R7525. That's unbelievable. This level of processing power is going to allow you to dramatically increase the potential workload on a given server. This is especially important for our VMware customers who, as you know, are licensed on a per socket model. In the same area as the processors, you'll notice the memory modules. While both servers utilize the same DDR4 memory and support both RDIMMs and LRDIMMs, there are a few differences. The R7515 can populate up to 16 DIMMs and support speeds of up to 3200 megatransfers per second. Now, since the R7525 is dual socket, it supports up to 32 DIMMs with speeds of up to 3200 megatransfers per second. Finally, we've reached the rear of the server. Here, you'll find the power supplies, management port, and PCIe slots. Now, taking a look at the power supplies, we see these orange tabs, which, as I mentioned earlier, indicates that the power supplies are hot swappable. Now, you may have noticed that the power supplies are more evenly spread out in the R7525. That's not an accident. The placement of these power supplies, along with the other airflow improvements like Dell's new T-shaped motherboard design, high-performance fan placement, etc., all contribute to what Dell refers to as multi-vector cooling 2.0. Now, don't let this fancy term fool you. It's just Dell's way of saying that they greatly increase the airflow and thermal efficiency of the overall chassis. Another part of multi-vector cooling 2.0 is advancements in liquid cooling configurations. Dell's proprietary leak sense technology can be intertwined with Dell's iDRAC 9 management console to send you alerts and even automatically shut down the server if a coolant leak is detected. How cool is that? Moving on to the expansion slots, it's important to note that while the R7515 is limited to just four PCIe slots, two Gen 3 and two Gen 4, the R7525 is able to support up to eight PCIe slots, all of which are Gen 4. 
As far as GPU support goes, the R7515 supports up to four single width GPUs, and the R7525 supports up to six single width GPUs, or up to three double width GPUs. This makes either server great for VDI workloads or any other video processing workloads requiring a GPU. Other uses for these PCA slots would be network cards, host bus adapters, external perks, and any other PCA compatible components. All right, remember earlier I promised some exciting changes with the R7525? Well, here we are. My favorite feature of the R7525, the Boss S2. Before I explain the Boss S2, I think it's important to give some backstory on what the Boss card is. So with 14G servers, as well as the R7515, you have the option of storing your OS on a pair of M.2 chips within a single PCIe slot, referred to by Dell as the Boss card, or Boss S1 to be more specific. Picture this. Your OS is stored on a Boss S1, in a RAID 1 of course, and one of your chips fails for whatever reason. Your server still runs as normal because of the redundant chip, so you don't sweat it. You call up your XByte rep to have a new M.2 chip overnighted to you, and now it's time to replace the failed chip. You power off the server, remove the Boss card from the PCIe slot, you replace the chip, reboot the server. Those of you who have done it, you know, it's a slight inconvenience especially because you have to power down your server, costing your company money. Now, what if I told you that this is no longer the case with the R7525? The reason being is that instead of burning a PCIe slot for the Boss card, there is a specialized slot right here for what is known as the Boss S2. And this card right here is hot swappable. When Dell first made this announcement, I literally jumped out of my chair. This is something many of my customers and I have been begging and wishing for for years. Okay. So continuing back to the network cards, well, the network daughter card to be more specific. If you're familiar with PowerEd servers, you probably already know that the network daughter card is Dell's proprietary name given to the network card that is literally bolted on the motherboard. Moving forward with 15 gen servers, excluding the R7515, Dell is adopting the industry standard term of OCP 3.0. So just keep that in mind if you're building out an R7525 in our online configurator and see the term OCP 3.0, that is what it is referring to. And for my fellow Star Wars fans out there, no, this has nothing to do with our friend C-3PO. So that sums up my high-level comparison of Dell's PowerEd's R7515 and Dell's PowerEd's R7525. Thank you for watching today. If you have any questions or to speak to one of our Dell certified engineers, see the contact information below. To see more videos like this, please check out our channel. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.